Hi boys and girls, my name is Miss Laura and I'm the Director of Family Ministry and Christian Education at Grace United Methodist Church in Gaithersburg. I'm so glad that you are with us this evening. We are going to be talking about anxiety today. Anxiety, kind of a feeling when you're worried or stressed or something like that. So we're going to be talking about that today. But before we talk about anxiety, I want you to think about something happy. Now the study we're called, that, we're, that we are doing is called Managing Our Emotions. I've got all the different emotions on these, on these faces, lots of different emotions. So I would like you, to, first of all, I want you to know that you are loved. And that is very, very important that you know that. You are loved. Um, and I want you to think about hmm, how about when you come to church how do you feel loved when you come to church what do you feel how about when the children's choir sings does that make you happy when the children sing their songs at church makes me happy how about hmm, um, how about Sunday school? At Grace Church, we have some fantastic Sunday schools and some amazing Sunday school teachers. And our Sunday school teachers love the children very, very much. Our Sunday school teachers are so wonderful and caring and they care for you very, very much. They are very loving. So I am sure that if you are in one of the Grace Church Sunday schools, then you will feel happy. That anxiety and worry, I think when you go through that door into Sunday school, that anxiety is going to leave you while you're in that room because it's such a happy place to be. Now, now we are kind of on lockdown, um, not able to go places, able to go into church and search because of the coronavirus. We are having Sunday school uh, Zoom, so online. So if you borrow a parent's uh, computer, or iPad or something like that, at um, half past 11, 11.30 on Sundays, Miss Alicia, who is actually one of the most loving people I have ever met, really truly, she will lead an all ages Sunday school and we've really been enjoying that. So I really hope you can join in. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter you and your siblings, everyone can just join in. And if you need the Zoom information, just let me know, message me. You can message me on what you're watching right now, um, Engage Children's Ministry, or you can go through the church directory. Again, my name is Laura Freeburn. That's my full name, so you'll be able to find me and message me and I will give you the Sunday School information. So, moving on. I would like for you to think about last week. Because well, last week we talked about emotions, we talked about happiness and joy. But since we last spoke, a few days ago, so Tuesday we spoke, since then I would like you to think about the happy feelings that you've had. Can you think of the happy feelings that you've had? It might be going to get ice cream, getting a hug, um, finding something you lost, getting an invitation to go somewhere, watching a special television program. It could be so many things. So I want you to think about that for a minute. I've had a lot of happy things since since then. I have a lot of animals at my house and I love anim I love hugging my animals. So that is a, a happiness feeling for me. But I would love to know your happiness feelings. All right, I have a video to play for you and it's a very special video. It's somebody that I love very, very much. And um, this is Miss Molly. And she's going to be famous one day, I tell you. So, Miss Molly is kind enough to be our singer, entertainer, actress, and just somebody that will um, be encouraging you along the way. Miss Molly has agreed to help me in any way. And um, she actually has written some words of encouragement. And Miss Molly wrote these by herself. 
and uh, I would like to share them with you. So let's have a look at what we have here. I'm going to show you using my computer. Now let's see if we can get this worked out this time. All right, Molly. Oh, Molly, there we go. I'm sorry for the technical difficulties. We're still trying to work this out. Um, I'm going to play it again at the end of the lesson just to make sure that you got to see all of everything Molly had to say because it was a little bit quiet at the beginning. And that wasn't Molly's fault, that was my fault. So I will play that again at the end of the session. I'm still trying to work out how to get your videos over, but we'll get there. Maybe by next Tuesday I'll get there and playing the videos will be a lot easier. Okay, what have I got for you now? Let's talk about the Bible. Now, I'm going to read from the book of Luke, the book of Luke, and we are going to talk about the story of when Jesus was in the temple and he stayed behind in Jerusalem to be with the elders, like the older people in the temple, when he was just 12 years old. Then, how do you think his parents felt when they realized that he wasn't with them, that he'd stayed behind and they had walked for miles and miles and then realized he wasn't there? How do you think they felt? Let's have a look. Okay, I hear a chicken. Why do I hear a chicken in my living room? <laughs> All right, do you want to bring the chicken over while I find the book of Luke here? Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Here, you can show everybody Clover. <laughs> Hi Clover. Is this your shining moment? Oh, you're going to read for me? Don't peck the Bible. I don't think that's a good idea. Maybe you could find my page for me. I should have found this beforehand. What are you doing? What are you doing? Bye -bye. I know, I know. Thank you very much. All right, we've got Luke 2, verse 41 to 52. Okay. And I'm reading from the Adventure, Adventure Bible that is presented to children at Grace Church. If you do not have a Bible, please let me know. All right, so the book of Luke. Uh, chapter 2, verses 41 to 52. All right. So... Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went to the festival, according to the custom. After the festival was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. There they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to find him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, 
listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me? He asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's home? But they did not understand what he was saying. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Wow. Now, let's say we had a festival at Grace Church because we do have several festivals at Grace Church. We love having a, having a good time and socializing and inviting our neighbors to church. So imagine that we had a festival at Grace Church um, and you came along and you decided that instead of going with your parents when they went home, you would stay behind and talk to the Sunday school teachers for a while. What do you think your parents would think when they got home and looked in the back of the car and said, oh, he's not there. I don't think they'd be very happy. Can you imagine the emotions all mixed up? We've talked before about emotions being able to be mixed. You're sad and anxious and angry and nervous and all kinds of things. I mean, if that happened, could you imagine? I think there'd been a lot of trouble, but all Jesus's mum said was, what was it? Uh, son, uh, it's on the other page. Uh, so she did not understand why Jesus would do that. And um, she said, why, son, why have you treated us like this? So, son, why have you treated us like this? And Jesus didn't really understand. He just answered, I, I needed to be in God's house. Although that was his answer. But um, So, have a think, have a think, and pretend that you were either Jesus's mummy or Jesus's daddy. So put that in your mind right now, whichever one you've chosen to be, and imagine right now, have all the feelings of excitement because you're at the festival. And it's so happy and fun and there's dancing and lots of good food. Can you feel the happiness right now inside you? Because you're imagining that you were there. So feel that happiness, but all bubbling up. And then you leave the festival and kind of the real big happiness bubbles kind of fizzle down a little bit and you start to relax. You're probably a bit tired because you've been at the festival and you've had so much fun. So think on those feelings for a minute. Oh, kind of chilling out, relaxing, a bit tired. And now you've just realized that your son is missing. Now, which emotions do you think we'll be feeling now? Oh my goodness. Scared. What could have happened? Anxious. Oh my goodness me, we need to get there. Nervous. Anxiety. How could he do this to me? Anger. You see how quickly all those emotions can just bubble up. No, I don't want to leave you all sad, so put all those sad emotions away and bring that happiness back into you. I much prefer you all to be happy and not sad, which is why we're talking about this study. So, yeah, so we see that people in the Bible are feeling all of these emotions too. Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, felt sad and angry and anxious, so she felt that too. So to have these feelings is normal. To have these feelings is normal okay so can you think of a time when you got lost i think most people have been lost at some point and you couldn't see your parents maybe you got separated in a playground or 
you couldn't find your teacher on a field trip or something like that. So it's those same emotions, right? The nervousness and the anxiety all kind of bubbling up. So I want to, this book is very good, this Managing Our Emotions. And it says here that I need to point out to you that children experience anxiety. We know this because a lot of you do experience anxiety and that's okay. But um, adults experience anxiety too. So parents can be anxious and worried. They can be maybe a little angry. Um, but sometimes when people are anxious and angry and they may experience sadness in something bad that has happened or might happen. So when a grown up is sad or angry, you don't have to worry that it's always about you because grown ups sometimes can be sad or angry and they have something else on their heart. But if a grown up gets too angry all the time, then maybe it's time to talk to your Sunday school teacher just to let them know. But it's it's okay for parents to have those feelings too. The sad, sad and anxious and worried if something bad has happened and angry sometimes. It's parents get angry too. Parents have these emotions as well, just like you. Okay, so it's, it's important to remember that just as in the story, the Bible story that we read, that loving parents and caring adults, so not just loving parents, because some people don't have parents for many different reasons, and that is not to be judged. We're not judging anybody if they do not have parents, but the caring adults, that care for you. Um, they will always come back looking for you. You will always have someone to look for you if you are lost. And you know what? Even though the you will always have an adult to look after you, who will always come and find you, Jesus is always with you. And he will always find you because he's always with you. It's like there's a story about, you know, a lost sheep. In fact, I'm not going to tell that story. I'd like you to look that up in the Bible, the parable of the lost sheep. And, you know, Jesus cares for every single one of you. He doesn't just pick someone and say, oh, I'm going to care for you today, or I'm going to care for you. He's going to care for you too. It doesn't matter what clothes you're wearing. It doesn't matter who you are, what your interests are. If you've been naughty, if you've been really good, he cares for everybody and he will always find you. And how do we talk to Jesus, boys and girls? We've talked about this lots of times. How do we talk to Jesus? We pray. And we're going to be doing that together in a little bit. Okay. So, we have a video that I'm going to, that I'm hopefully going to put on here next week children i promise next week we will have our technical difficulties sorted out i promise so this week i'm going to sort you out and we're going to watch a video about sad feeling and emotion for kids and it's all about feeling sad so let me get this together all right miss molly i'm going to minimize you and we are going to play this and I want to make sure that you can see it. All right. Make sure the volume's up. feeling sad when I am feeling sad my smile disappear I want to stay in bed I want to cry
Everyone feels sad sometimes. makes me feel sad. Some things just make me feel sad like my mammy and daddy arguing. My favorite toy is broken. Someone else is sad. What can I do when I am feeling sad? When I am feeling sad, I can talk about my sadness with my friend. I can listen to my favorite music. I can stay with my family quietly. It can make me feel better. Something about sad. Sadness does not last forever. Feeling sad isn't wrong. It's all right to cry when you are feeling sad. for more video okay now boys and girls after seeing that video did you hear any ways that can help you when you're sad I had some ways um, the little girl said um, listening to music hugging her toy I think she said um, chatting with a friend. Now there's lots of ideas what you can do when you're feeling sad. I've got, a, there's a couple in here I can share with you. Um, so it's listening to music. You can um, invite a friend over or this, well, now we're in COVID, it's a little bit more difficult, but if you are sharing um, time with people, you know, if you have cousins or something that have been coming over, people that are allowed to come over, maybe you can invite somebody over. Or if it's just you in your house with your brothers and sisters, maybe you can do a special invitation to one of your siblings and invite them into your room for a special playtime. Building Legos, that helps because that takes your concentration. It can take your worries away because you're concentrating on doing your Lego. So Lego is a good idea. Making cards. You can make birthday cards, welcome cards, congratulations, get well, a friendship card. There's a card for every occasion. And you can make a card. Could you imagine how special that would be to somebody if you just, out of the blue, out of nowhere, just decided to write a letter? Um, somebody wrote me a letter recently and it was so lovely. And you know what? I don't even know that person very well at all. And she just wrote me a lovely letter saying very nice things about me and my family. And I, ch I cherish that letter. So I definitely encourage you to do that. And that will make you feel good and somebody else feel good. So that's a double feel good. So I definitely encourage that. And then doing a craft. Um, if you are allowed on the internet, if your parents allow you to go onto the internet, to Pinterest or to a craft site, you can learn how to do all kinds of things, like make tissue paper flowers and paper aeroplanes, and it's limitless. Learn how to knit. You know, there's so many different things that you can be doing. Um, dancing, we already talked about dancing. Dancing is a great anxiety reliever. Just put on music and put, if you're allowed to put it on, as loud as you can and dance away. Okay, before we finish up, I have another video for you. And this video is about being afraid of the dark. Um, so I would like you to think about if you are afraid of the dark. And if you have anything that you do, any advice that you could share with us. 
we would love you all to share some advice, things that you do so you're not so anxious when, um, when you are afraid of the dark. Um, let's have a look. It would be a good idea if you, you know, to write all these feelings down, why you are afraid of the dark, and, um, and just write them all down and look at them and then realize, you know, with each one, how you can stop each of these feelings. So let's have a look. This one is scared of the dark. Okay. Here we go. Let's make it big. Lucy was a brave girl and very strong, but for some reason she felt scared of darkness. She always shared her room with her elder sister. One day, her sister told her that she was going on a tour with her friends. This news scared Lucy, as for the next three weeks, she would have to sleep alone. Don't worry, you'll be fine. You'll have your little puppy by your side. One night, when her parents had to go out, she was told to stay at home till the sitter came to take care of her. The weather had gone bad, and Lucy had to take care of her puppy, who was scared of the thunder. It grew dark outside, and the storm became louder. Suddenly, the lights went out, and Lucy panicked. Her puppy began to howl, and she thought that maybe somebody was outside. She wanted to go out and see, but she was too scared. Gradually, the storm became settled, and Lucy took a fresh breath of air. Suddenly, she heard someone banging at the door. She grabbed her puppy and ran into her room. She hid under the bed, crying in fear. Then, she heard someone opening the door of her room. She was now completely frightened. It was the sitter. Lucy jumped out and hugged her. I was scared of dark and thought that you were a ghost. Why are you hiding over there? And why didn't you open the door when the lights went out? Oh, Lucy, there are no ghosts. It's all fiction, and it's just in your mind. Lucy was still scared, so the sitter took her downstairs and showed her that they were all alone. Lucy realized that there wasn't any ghost and felt embarrassed. Lucy, you are a brave girl and smart too. Don't let little things scare you. Of all things, darkness is nothing to be scared of. If you feel scared, light a candle, be logical, and just have some courage. And if you still feel scared, think of some jokes or funny moments and laugh out the fear. You're right. From now on, I'll recall this day and laugh whenever I'm scared. Lucy understood very well, and since that day, darkness did not scare her anymore. How about that, boys and girls? Wasn't that a nice video? Monster Map oh, presents dear, dear. Counting to We don't need that, thank you very much. So what did you think of that video and the things that Lucy did? She was very scared. Little thunder and lightning and then the babysitter knocking at the door. So scared, but then she realized that she didn't need to be scared and her babysitter gave her some ideas that would make her laugh in the future. And if she was anxious, she should think about these things and laugh. All right, boys and girls, I have two things. We are going to close with a prayer. And I also want to show you the Molly video again because I didn't quite get it right the first time. So I'm going to, actually I'll do the Molly video first and then we'll do the prayer together afterwards. So let's get set up one more time for our, our setup here. And next time I'll be able to share my screen with you so it will be much, much easier. All right, let's get you sorted so we can see Molly better. Can we see Molly? Yes, we can. All right, Moles. Hey guys, it's me, Molly from England. I just wanted to say that sometimes everyone in the whole world feels sad and worried sometimes. 
I think it's a great idea to talk to an adult about it because sometimes the sand is too big to handle it on your own. I hope you all have a smile on your face today. It's me from England. I hope you enjoy the day. Bye! <laughs> That video made my day. Thank you so much, Molly. And I'm looking forward to your next video on Tuesday. All right, everyone. It is time for us to end in prayer. When I say these words, will you say them with me? Thank you, God for loving me. Thank you, God, for sending help for me. I will ask your help so I will not be sad or anxious. Amen. Amen. Okay, my lovely boys and girls, we will be back. Let's have a look at what we're doing on next Tuesday. Fear and frustration is what we are going to be working on next week. Um, always, if you have anything that you need to talk to me about, I would love you to message me. I'm always available, always, always available to talk to you about anything at all in confidence if you would like. So um, you may message me on Facebook or through the Grace Church website. Uh, remember that I love each and every one of you. You're very, very special. God loves each and every one of you. All right, boys and girls, I will see you on Tuesday for our next study. Have a wonderful night. Cheers.